All right, so I'm not even gonna do a proper intro for this video. I just gotta say I had to take a quick lap around the house. I say lap because I had to hop on my scooter over here. Around the house at, after the uh, after the last video. If you guys did not watch the last video, I got the absolute behebers. I'm not trying to curse because monetization and such, um, but I got scared out of my chair that I had actually paused the video in the middle of <laughs> middle of it. So if you guys did not watch that video, please go back to the last reaction video and watch it because it was the best scare you've I've that, you, that anything has gotten out of me me from reactions in quite a while. And the last time I got jump scared that badly was from Kane Pixels uh, found footage backrooms 2 video. <laughs> I haven't been jumped out of my chair in quite a while, and I'm pretty sure I did bang my bad leg into the leg of my table. So, because I had it up all across, had my legs crossed, I had like over my other leg, facing the computer and into one of the uh, one of the legs of the ch of the table. So, <laughs> definitely hit my leg. <laughs> But I, I can only laugh because I got scared so bad and I wasn't expecting it. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about mild horror. We're going to be talking about the SCP Foundation, a video made by Dr. Dr. I was about to say Dr. Boss, but that's not his name. It's Dr. Bob. This is SCP-3583 Hellbus, which I know I have never seen because once again, it's been a while since I've watched any of uh, SCP videos on this channel. And now we're getting back into it, so... And well, actually, no, and you know what? I actually did lose interest of the SCP Foundation for quite a while. So now I'm back into it. I got my heart racing still from the last video because I just finished recording it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get around to this because this is more mild horror than what I just experienced in the last video. Go check it out. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get, click play into this bad boy in three, two, one, go. The final bell water. rings, oh, signaling yeah, the bit. end of a new class's first day at middle school. A girl exits the building, her backpack slung over her shoulder, body hunched under its unfamiliar weight. It's been a long and tiring day. Her family just moved to this small Oklahoma town from the big city, and of course, she's spent every minute since then trying to adjust to her new surroundings. It's never easy to be the new kid in town. Mm. Right now, all she wants to do is to get home and relax. She doesn't want to think about school and its related anxieties for the rest of the night. As she walks down the stairs, she notices the school bus parked at the curb. Thank goodness, she thinks. I can't wait to get out of here. This day can't end soon enough. But for some reason, something about this bus sets her nerves on edge. What is it that just seems off? There's nothing blatantly wrong with the bus, but when she looks closer, she realizes that it definitely looks a little strange. The different parts of the bus just don't add up. Some parts are new, clearly just off the factory floor, while others are battered and bruised from long-time wear. Yeah, it looks like it just got sent to a scrapyard. Some parts even seem to come from different makes and models of bus. I guess it's not that strange, she thinks. After all, her old school always had a measly budget. You could practically see the road through holes in the floor sometimes. Wow. Her new one probably really just has thing. those same issues. Aren't those problems all over the country, after all? The school probably just had to buy a I don't take the bus anymore. Bus cobbled together from random <laughs> Last parts. time I took a bus, like an actual like school bus to school was the fifth grade, and that was it. That was the end of it. <laughs> to make ends meet. And besides, she thinks, as she watches her classmates pile onto the strange bus without a second thought, none of the other kids seem to think that there's anything weird going on. This must all just be in my head, she thinks. I'm probably just being weird because I'm so tired. I can't let myself become the new girl and the weird girl. The girl is startled as she hears a voice behind her. Hey! She turns and sees a boy that she recognizes. He sits behind her in class. They haven't spoken before now, but he seems friendly enough. You're the new kid in school, aren't you? He says. Yes, my family just moved to town. She tries to talk to him, but she can't help but keep getting distracted by the weird bus. Right, right. The boy glances at the bus, as if he can sense her discomfort with it. You worried about the bus? I was pretty nervous my first time riding it, but I don't worry about it anymore. You get used to it, he tells her. Uh, right, she says. I recognize the music that's playing in the background, but I don't remember the name of it. Girl feels her cheeks going red with embarrassment. 
She doesn't want her classmate to think that she's scared of riding a bus. What if he tells the other kids that she's frightened of a bus ride? They're all going to think that she's some kind of silly baby. I'm not scared of the bus. It is just a bus, right? The boy grins, as if he knows something that she doesn't know. The girl doesn't want to admit her fear, and so with a defiant step, she climbs the stairs and enters the bus. Once she's on board, her unease doesn't go away. The first thing that she notices is that there is no one in the driver's seat. That's weird. Did the driver just step away to use the bathroom or something? Seems pretty irresponsible to leave the bus unattended. Yeah. There's a line forming think- behind her, though, so she doesn't have time to think about this. She takes a seat and stares out the window, keeping to herself. The boy from her class follows and takes a seat next to her. It's a little wild at first. This kid appears to me like a sucker. But trust me, you'll get used to it fast. In fact, some of us think it's kind of fun now. The girl blinks in confusion. Who is this weirdo that gets such a kick out of riding the bus? She almost wants to snap at him, to tell him that of course she's not scared of riding the bus. She's ridden the bus hundreds of times back at her old school. But at the same time, there's definitely something weird going on here. And as much as she's trying to play it cool, she's clearly not able to hide her feelings. This boy can easily sense that she's uncomfortable. Suddenly, the bus lurches into action and pulls away from the curb. But wait, how can this be? She never saw the driver get back on board. The bus can't be driving itself, can it? She stands up in her seat and cranes her neck to see. Her eyes bulge from her head in fear and surprise as she realizes that, in fact, there's no one driving the bus at all. The driver's seat is empty and the wheel is turning by itself as the bus careens down the road. Who's driving the bus? She shouts, but the other kids barely even react to her outburst. Most of them are chattering amongst themselves and only one or two turn to look at her briefly before shrugging and turning back to their own private conversations. A chorus of giggles. Does it appear to just mess with the individual's head? Giggles behind her alert her to the fact that she's just completely embarrassed herself. What's the matter, you scared? Calls an older boy from the back of the bus, guffawing loudly. Of course no one's driving. Don't you know anything? Leave her alone, says the boy in the seat next to her. It's her first time. She's never ridden the bus before. She's too panicked to correct him that, yes, she has been on the bus before, but not a bus like this one. What's going on? We're all going to die, she cries, clutching at the seat in front of her in terror. Despite her fear, though, she can't help but notice that the bus isn't simply speeding into oblivion. The bus obeys all the traffic laws, stopping at stop signs and signaling before turns. It's almost as if the bus itself is alive and aware of what it's doing. That's just how it is, says the boy next to her in a matter-of-fact voice as if he's anticipated her question. Apparently, this is a normal day for kids here in this Oklahoma town. The girl doesn't think she could ever get used to a bus that drives itself. But what comes next is going to prove to be even stranger. But you might want to close your eyes for this next part, says the boy. The girl asks him what he means by that. But before he can answer, she feels a strange wave of sudden nausea overcome her. Her vision goes hazy, and the whole world seems to waver in her sight. But the sensation passes quickly, and everything is quickly back to normal. Or is it? She turns to look out the window. The city passing by is familiar. She can recognize many of the same buildings that she passed on her way to school this morning. But now they seem strangely altered. The structures are in advanced states of disrepair, with broken windows and boarded up doors. The gutters are filled with trash and debris, and the streets seem to be abandoned. The bus takes a left turn down a side street, and the girl catches a brief glimpse of the town's city hall in the distance. She gasps. City hall is on fire, great gouts of hot red flame pouring from the shattered windows. Sirens echo through the air. The sky above is an ominous red. Does this bus literally transport you to hell? Filled with angry storm clouds with jagged bolts of dry lightning dancing between the thunderheads and she can see the funnel of a distant tornado making a touchdown in the hills. Or like an alternate reality that's supposed to resemble hell. The bus briefly comes to a stop in front of the library, dutifully obeying a flickering traffic light. The library's windows are dark, but she can vaguely see shapes moving about (laughs) inside. Electric sparks shoot from malfunctioning street lamps and downed power cables flail like angry snakes in the street. It looks like some terrible natural disaster has hit the city, but what could it be? Surely she would have heard some warning while she was at school. It wouldn't have just carried on as usual in the classroom while the world outside burned. She turns to the boy next to her, a fearful question on her trembling lips. He seems to know what's going on. Otherwise, how could he be so eerily calm while everything outside the bus is falling apart or on fire? What happened to the city? Was there an earthquake? No, he would have felt it. Was there a hurricane? 
Every possible disaster scenario runs through her head as she desperately tries to think of an explanation. But what happens next reveals to her that there's no natural explanation for the strange sights that assail her eyes. As she watches through the window, a squadron of armed soldiers march down the street toward the darkened library. Suddenly the doors fly open and people pour out, screaming as if they're being chased by some unspeakable evil. The girl expects that the soldiers must be here for disaster relief, but she is horrified when, instead of helping the escaping library patrons, they instead open fire upon the crowd. The girl screams in terror, but the other kids barely even notice. They're too busy talking or laughing. One kid is so disinterested in the spectacle outside that he's playing with a handheld- Are these kids a part of the anomaly? I know Dr. Bob's gonna get to it at near the end of the video, but I'm just asking these questions now. ...game console rather than watch the carnage unfold. How can this be happening? Has the whole world gone crazy? She's filled with terror as she wonders, is the whole town under siege? Is her house still standing? Are her parents safe? Where is this bus even taking her? I told you that you might want to cover your eyes, says the boy next to her. The bus continues on its route, passing all sorts of terrifying sights. A parking lot has been transformed into a mass grave. She watches as uniformed police line up peaceful citizens against a brick wall to brutally execute them by firing squad. Mass riots are taking place in the town's central park. People are yelling obscenities and pounding one another into pulp, while armed law enforcement officers sweep in to escalate the situation. The air is thick with screams, gunfire, and the smell of burning bodies. The shopping Jesus mall Christ. is overrun with giant spiders, which chase screaming shoppers out of the exits. She sees rats as big as cars scurrying out of the alleyways, grabbing random people with their taloned paws and biting their heads off with their long, sharp incisors. On the distant hills, she can also make out the outlines of even stranger creatures that she cannot identify. Dinosaurs, aliens, demons. She Jesus doesn't come Christ. from a particularly religious family, but the sights that she sees today definitely make her think that she might be seeing a glimpse into the maw of hell itself. The girl has never seen anything so awful in all her life. To her surprise, several of the other kids cheer as the bus drives past a gaggle of walking corpses. They're mutilated and half decomposed, but somehow still mobile, shambling down the sidewalk and moaning. Zombies. How can the other kids be enjoying this? Yeah, 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 chant the kids. Zombies, that rules. Maybe we'll get to see them eat some brains for once, cries the older boy in the back of the bus with sudden glee. What is going on? repeats the girl. It's just the usual bus ride, says the boy next to her. Don't worry, I felt the same way when I first started at this school, but it's really not so bad. I mean, it's kind of cool, isn't it? The girl opens her mouth to respond, but she's suddenly overcome with that familiar feeling of nausea. The world quivers briefly in front of her, and suddenly, everything is back to normal. The sky is clear and blue, the buildings are no longer dilapidated, what the hell? people are bustling in the streets, going about their usual business. There's no sign of any of the horrors that she just witnessed. No fires, no soldiers, no monsters, and no zombies. The boy next to her commented that they must have been reaching someone's stop. From around the bus, she hears several other kids groan in frustration. They were hoping that they would get to see some exciting zombie carnage, but it looks like that show will have to wait for another time. The bus slowly comes to a halt, and the girl tenses as she hears the hiss of its air brakes. The door opens, and the girl realizes that the bus has stopped in front of her house. She's relieved to see that her house is standing, and she can see her mother gardening in the front yard, safe and sound. Was it all a dream? This is my stop, says the girl, standing up as if in a daze. Uh, the first time's always a little wild, says the boy as she leaves. Don't worry, tomorrow will be easier. The girl steps onto the curb and away from the bus. The doors close behind her, and the bus pulls away, continuing on its journey. Did you enjoy your first day of school today? asks the girl's mother. The girl can only stare in shock as the bus drives away. What just happened? Did a self-driving bus just take her on a tour of hell before bringing her right to her own doorstep? Or did she really just imagine that whole experience? As you astute Foundation veterans have probably already right, here goes together, the explanation. this new girl at school didn't imagine anything she just saw. That girl just had her first encounter with SCP-3583. At face value, SCP-3583 resembles an ordinary school bus, albeit one composed of completely random parts all held together by some unknown force. Yeesh. The bus is self-driving <clears throat> and in fact resists any attempt by a human to sit in the driver's seat. At some point, SCP-3583 became attached to a particular school in an undisclosed Oklahoma town for reasons the SCP Foundation still doesn't understand. Every school day, at 3.45 p.m., it appears outside of the school just as the school day comes to a close. 
the bus can hold up to 56 children and up to 8 adults. If it judges that not enough children have boarded, SCP-3583 will begin to honk its horn. The horn has a peculiar, hypnotic effect on all children within hearing range. They will be compelled to drop whatever they are doing and board the bus, meaning that the bus has some innate cognitohazardous properties. If the Ow. bus still feels that it hasn't reached its quota, it will increase the volume of its horn until it has attracted enough children that it can begin its route. Depending on how many adults have boarded, SCP-3583 has two distinct patterns of behavior. If four or fewer adults are aboard, SCP-3583 enters Behavior Pattern 1. In this pattern, SCP-3583 will dematerialize and enter a parallel reality called SCP-3583-A. SCP-3583- Okay, so it's not directly a portal to hell, but it's a reality that's supposed to resemble hell. I can't stop putting my leg down. <laughs> A superficially resembles the normal geography of the same Oklahoma town, with some minor but very important changes. The typical city landscape is replaced with a hellish alternative full of crumbling architecture, marauding monsters, shambling zombies, fires and natural disasters, and instances of military violence and civil unrest. SCP-3583 will travel through this terrifying hell dimension along normal bus routes, studiously obeying all traffic laws and pausing to re-enter our own reality only to deliver kids to their own homes. Interestingly, SCP-3583 only offers door-to-door -door service and ignores all conventionally posted bus stops. Huh. If five or more adults are aboard, SCP-3583 enters Behavior Pattern 2. What is In that? this pattern, SCP-3583 will travel to the sites of mass casualty events, seemingly arriving in the days or weeks preceding oh. the incident, where it will circle the area for approximately 45 to 100 minutes. After this, it will enter Pattern 1, delivering each child passenger to their home, before then delivering its adult passengers home as well. Known mass casualty sites visited include Pompeii, Nanking, and the World Trade Center in New York. Passengers inside SCP-3583 can take photos or video through the bus window, and all footage shot from within SCP-3583 matches exactly with archive footage taken at the mass casualty site at the time that SCP-3583 supposedly visited. However, SCP-3583 itself has never been reported by witnesses at any site or seen in any archive footage of any site. Huh. Luckily, SCP-3583 has proven to be a boon to this struggling school district. The school principal noted that SCP-3583 has a better safety record than any human driver. In addition, Wait, right, so the school is full was fully aware of the SCP the whole time? I guess they were all right with it. It never calls in sick and is never late for a pickup or drop off. Every student that has received a ride in SCP-3583 has arrived safely, if a little shaken, at their home destination. And best of all, SCP-3583 is saving the school a lot of money on both driver pay and vehicle maintenance, money that the school has used to hire a new music teacher. The general consensus of the local community is that as long as SCP-3583 wants to work as a school bus and continues to do a good job, who are they to look a gift horse in the mouth? Although it still might behoove some of SCP-3583's more sensitive riders to shut their eyes and plug their ears until they get safely home. The SCP Foundation first became aware of SCP-3583 when students began posting cell phone footage of their rides online. Although the Foundation has successfully scrubbed information about SCP-3583 from the internet, it has been less successful in figuring out what to do with the so-called school bus from hell. Foundation field agents are so far unable to explain SCP-3583's motive or operations. Conventional attempts to contain SCP-3583, such as impounding the bus or towing it to the junkyard, are futile. SCP-3583 will immediately dematerialize, falling apart into a rubble of disparate bus parts oh. as the force binding it together appears to abandon this plane. However, SCP-3583 will always return the next school day, ready and willing to begin its afternoon shift. Agents have considered closing the affected school, but feared that would only move the problem, as SCP-3583 would simply attach itself to another school. The yeah. SCP Foundation is currently monitoring the situation and has several agents- I'm gonna go ahead and guess this is a Keter level SCP. ...embedded within the school district, posing as regular staff. Because of this immense difficulty in containment, SCP-3583 has been given the Keter object class. There we go. Considering the number of SCP anomalies that involve horrific bodily harm being done to their victims, it's honestly a breath of fresh air to be dealing with one this seemingly benevolent, a little post-traumatic stress disorder aside, of course. And while Hellbus may be what most around the Foundation have taken to referring to this particular anomaly, 
I'm going to stick to my own name, the Tragic School Bus. The Tragic School Bus? Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like Man-Eating Bus, SCP-2086, rerouting, for another piece of public transportation with a terrifying secret. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications <laughs> so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archive. Okay. I was I had to pause the video at the last second because the next video would start. But that's not at all what I was expecting from this video. Well, actually, no, I expected some of it, but not like this and such. And apparently Dr. Bob's out appearance has changed a bit. Since the last time, since the last time I watched in a full video from a while back, a while, while, while back, like I'm talking about like a year ago back, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. I have no idea what I have planned next for the time being, but I'm going to go ahead and keep recording a bunch more videos as time goes on because I am going to fill this entire slot for February. That being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe, all that stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.